Okay, Science 10, welcome back. The next sheet we're going to look at, or actually it's a booklet, Ionic Charges and Chemical Families. Um, so we'll start with the first one, Alkali Metals. And of course you should be familiar with that from the previous assignment that we looked at. The Alkali Metals are the ones over here on the left-hand side of the periodic table. So if we omit hydrogen for now, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, and francium. So those are the ones we're going to be looking at here for this assignment. So over on the left-hand side, we, the first thing you can do is just simply transfer those names over. So lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, and francium. I've done it already here for you. And of course, the corresponding symbol for each one. We won't worry about this 3 plus just yet. We'll just simply look at uh, the symbols. So notice the symbols of the elements have a capital letter, and they may or may not have a second letter which is not capitalized. So lithium, Li, sodium, Na. And of course, some of these are not based on English words. Um, potassium, K, etc. Now, to figure out what the Bohr diagram is, now hopefully you did this back in grade 9, um, but if you didn't, the Bohr diagram is um, kind of a visual picture of what an atom is believed to look like. So what happens here is that you have a nucleus in the middle that has all of the protons in it. Don't worry about drawing this, just pay attention. And we kind of have a first energy level, which is almost viewed like viewed like an orbit around the sun. And then we have a second energy level, and then a third energy level, and fourth, fifth, sixth, etc., so on and so on. And of course, in those energy levels, you can have a certain number of electrons. In the first level, uh, you can have a maximum of two electrons. And then in the next level, eight electrons. And then in the next level, we'll look at having a maximum of eight electrons again. So that is the total that you're allowed to have from an atomic point of view. Okay. So how do you figure out how many electrons an atom has? Well, you have to look back at the periodic table and specifically the atomic number. If you look at this key here, the top left number is the atomic number. So lithium, for example, has 3. Sodium has an atomic number of 11. And what the atomic number uh, represents is the number of positive protons in the nucleus and also uh, the number of electrons circling around the nucleus. So if we look here, lithium has three. So if we go back to this page, lithium has three protons. So I'll label that as three P pluses. I like to call protons P pluses, indicating that they're positive. And just instead of writing out the whole word proton, just that. And then there's, of course, three electrons. And my minus button on my computer is not working, so I would have a minus button there if, it, if I could. Okay, so if we draw the board diagram, diagram of lithium, it would look something like that. So we have our, our um, central nucleus there. That's where the three protons would be and the three electrons are outside. So, of course, two in the first ring, one in the next ring. Okay, so that takes up all my three electrons. Now, atoms are not considered to be stable unless they have a full number of electrons in these energy levels. So, lithium kind of has two choices. It can have, to get eight electrons in this outer level, it can either gain seven, or if it loses this electron, then this level here would be considered the outside level, so it would lose one and have two. So if we take a look, the valence electrons here, you may want to make this note, whenever we use the words valence electrons, that means the outer electrons in the outermost orbit. So you can see I have one electron in this outer orbit here. Okay, And I've kind of let the answer out here either gain seven to get eight or lose one and then have this as our outer level 
which is the easiest to do? Well, I'll lose this one electron. If we lose that one electron, then this ring here disappears, and we have our outer level of two electrons. So, of course, you can't do that with your diagram, so let's leave it together like that. So, the Bohr diagram of the stable ion would have two electrons there, because it loses the one. And then looking at what the charge of lithium would be, we still have the three positive protons in the middle, but we lost one electron in the outside level. So we now have two electrons. And of course, if you'd work the math here, math makes sense. Three positives, two negatives. Two of these negatives cancel with three of the positives, leaving with one positive behind. So lithium would appear as Li+. plus. So that's how we would write the ionic symbol for lithium, Li plus. Okay. Okay, if uh, we look at the next one, sodium. If we go back to the periodic table here, uh, sodium, you can see here it has 11, 11, um, protons and 11 electrons, so it would look something like this. So it gets kind of cluttered here. I didn't leave a lot of room here. So two electrons in the first level has a maximum of eight in the next level. So if I use two plus eight, that's 10. And then one lonely electron in the outer level. So again, you come to the realization, okay, to get a full level, it needs to gain seven or lose one. Of course, it's easier to lose one electron. So, hey, it's similar to lithium here. So if it loses this one, oops, I, can't, I guess I can't do it because they're all connected. If I lose that one electron, and if I draw the Bohr diagram of the stable element, it would look something like that. So this electron here leaves, plus this level is gone, and now it looks like this. So now it has still the 11 protons in the nucleus. It lost an electron, so now has 10. 10 negatives cancel with 10 positives leaving me with positive one. So again, positive one is the answer. And uh, if we were to, to draw the symbol of sodium there, it would just be, it's kind of hard here, drawing with a mouse, Na plus. Okay, look at the next one, potassium. Once again, if you go back to the uh, periodic table, potassium, has the number 19 up here. So it has 19 uh, protons, 19 electrons. Now I didn't bother drawing this because I don't know, even know if I can even fit it in there. But you're going to see the form, the what's going to happen here. It's going to have 2, 8, 8. It's going to have one more in the next level. So like the other ones, it has one valence electron in that level. So, like sodium, it's going to lose an electron. So, overall, it's going to have positive 1. Because 19 positives, 19 and 19 negatives, but it loses one of those negatives to have 18. So, 19 positives and 18 negatives, it's going to reduce down to that. And we can see that here. Now, of course, you could draw this here, I suppose, but I didn't bother because I know I'm, I'm working with the mouse here. It's kind of difficult, but you could draw that just to see. Does it follow that same rule? And then these ones, they're too big, and I didn't leave a lot of room, so we just don't have to worry about that. But you can see what's going to happen there. We're going to have positive one charges all the way through. So potassium, when it becomes stable, it's going to be K+. Plus. Rubidium, Rb+. Plus. Cesium, Cs plus, francium, Fr plus. Okay, so that illustrates what I wanted you to show there. Alkaline earth metals, I'm going to get you to do this one. And of course, I say here that's the group 2A ones. So right over here, group 2A, starting with beryllium, magnesium, calcium, etc. You can go and just simply write all of those ones down over here, corresponding symbols. But I'm going to leave that for you to do. So I've illustrated what I, I'm, I'm kind of looking for in this assignment. We did this one together. If you have it filled out, you'll get the marks that you need there. And continue on with the rest of the booklet, doing the same format. And, and try to draw the diagram. In the bigger squares here, try to draw the board diagrams 
Once again, I didn't because I'm using a mouse here and it's a little difficult to draw and squeeze it in there, but I think you should be able to do that.